Hello and welcome to another episode of Business Class. My name is Shantanu Prakash and today on the show we have an exceptional individual, Ankur Variku. He describes himself as an awareness speaker and we'll talk to him to find out what that means. But he's also a successful entrepreneur who's done some very interesting things in his life. Uh, he was the, the business head, uh, CEO of a very large um, US multinational, a hot internet company in India. He bought that business back and now his company nearby.com uh, has uh, is across 33 cities I believe and almost a hundred thousand businesses but Ankur also has a second life or maybe we should call it your first life <laughs> where you are an awareness speaker you sure. inspire millions of people you have more than a million followers and once a week you are out in some college talking to young people so Ankur, uh, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Shanti. And we've never had somebody uh, with these kind of, you know, amazing qualifications. And I'd like to start by asking you that you had a typical uh, bright Delhi boy, uh, you know, existence when you were growing up. You went to a fantastic uh, school and then you went to Hindu college and then you went to the U.S. Uh, to enroll in a PhD program yes. and uh, because you wanted to become an engineer in NASA and design uh, rockets and space shuttles but something happened there something changed yes and now we have a different Ankur Variku you know your, your original plan failed yeah so tell us a little bit more about that it was uh, it's something that I actively speak about it's so close to my heart Shantanu I I grew up in life having a very certain plan and I went to the US as you mentioned when I was there something was not working. Like you were you're acing the exams like an Indian student in an US setup. You know, 2 plus 2 clip calculator nikal rate hai. You can calculate the cube root of 473 in your head and so on. But something's still not right there. And when I had these conversations with myself, I, I drew the conclusion that I was good at doing this, but I was not happy doing this. Hmm. Uh, and for the first time, I actually saw a distinction amongst these two things in life. Because usually you're told if you're good at something, you'll be happy doing it. But I was like, this is easy for me. Physics is something that I like. Uh, it's something that I'm fluent with, but it doesn't make me happy long term. And then I, uh, in a moment of uh, intense courage, and I'm so glad I had that, I decided to come back to India with no plan in mind, nothing whatsoever. Uh, it was a disaster for my parents, as you can imagine, for everyone in my world, for that matter. Everyone was like, you're, you're just out of your mind giving up all of this. Yeah, most parents, they live their dreams vicariously through their kids. Totally. Like, and yeah. I, I was the first one in our entire family, mom, dad, to go to the US, 100% scholarships, stipend, and all those nice yeah. things. Um, but yeah, I just gave that up and came back. So usually, um, Anku, that happens when you get inspired or you have like a role model hmm. that you you'd say to yourself, I want to be like this person. Hmm. Was there anything of that um, where you felt that you know, somebody inspired you to do that? No, it, it, it wasn't anybody, but I think the US per se and the culture and the vibrance of that place uh, exposed me to something I'd never seen before, which was you literally have everything at your disposal, literally everything. Yes. And at that point of time, it's your authenticity, your hard work and your labor that will see that through. There's very little destiny that they think of, uh, very little belief in faith as such. It's all self-will and which is uh, very anti the way very anti. Indians uh, exactly, no? think about things. exactly no yeah. you you do good good things will happen to you that's the Indian way of thinking mm. about it but here it was like no you have to take charge of what you want from life and everything that happens to you is an outcome of your decisions very different way of looking so at you it. come back to India as you say without a plan, without a plan. and then you write this famous uh, failure resume much later that's though much later so that's yeah. become really viral <laughs> but then you went to ISB yes so was there a plan or going to ISB or even that was part of your no plan that was no plan uh, I didn't know of ISB when I came back uh, oh, okay. it was it was five years old um, mm -hmm. this is 2005 six and uh, it was just very young, very few people know about it. Of course, the IIMs were all very well established. People suggested I should do an MBA. I thought maybe that's the right way to do it. But two years just seemed like a long investment in mm -hmm. something that I didn't know how it would change for me. Um, and ISB just felt the right thing, one year program, corporate kind of an education. More importantly, spending time with people who were far more experienced. I didn't have any experience. My entire worldview was very 
lateral in one direction and i got exposed to marketers and professionals and you got a help you get a job it helped uh, me get a job exactly which, uh, so to that extent break. i think that mba really worked for you Gave but you know break. most um, kids who graduate from isb have more than one option sure. when it comes to selecting and you selected an internet company yeah. to work for yeah. rather than for example an industrial conglomerate yeah. or an fmcg or a consulting company um, how, how did you think in that direction at all it was uh, it was something that i honestly didn't think through if i would admit honestly um, it was just something that i knew i would thoroughly enjoy um this is 2006 7 things are changing in in yeah, india yeah so very early days very very for early the internet days. boom actually. very very yeah. early days uh, but something that you no know, you you used to you've seen the us which is of course far ahead so you can almost predict the future of what's going to happen in india mm. you take that leap of faith and i'm glad that panned out uh, there was no basis for me to know for sure that this would work out but i knew that if i didn't take this decision maybe and it worked late. out for you in a really weird way <laughs> so that script played out differently than it what it plays out for most people yeah. most people who join a company they become ceo they feel they've reached the pinnacle of success in your case it was exactly the opposite <laughs> so tell us about that experience so that was very interesting shantanu i uh, i started the group on india business in 2011 um, became the ceo at, at 31 i was the ceo of a country office and suddenly the top ranks of a global mm-hmm. mnc everything was like really nice and everything is just going as per your plan uh, while there was no plan uh, but in 2015 or around about early uh, it was very obvious that there was a lot more potential in india and and group on's management for all the right reasons had their attention focused towards us and europe so came up with a very crazy idea that what if we go to them and ask them to sell the business to us mm-hmm. and we'll run it the way we want and the way we think it should be uh, it wasn't a very easy conversation first time but i think over time they saw the merit of what we were proposing and we made that management buyout happen uh, with partnership with sequoia who helped us a lot in the financing of it and that became nearby which is what i run so, today Ankur I see this is a, really the second time you actually did it. Hmm. The first time you abandoned your PhD, <laughs> got a master's degree, in some sense you disrupted your own life. Yeah. And the second time where you could have maybe quit this job and become CEO of another company yeah. because usually you know CEO designation is actually uh, the best way to get another job as a CEO, yeah. right? And but you decided to buy back the company and for the first time become an entrepreneur. Yeah. Now that's a completely a different ball game yes. even if it is funded by sequoia yeah. so did you have to reshift the way you think about things and about your own life significantly i i, I think it it's very easy to imagine what a life of an entrepreneur could be but only when you begin to live it <laughs> yes. do you begin to see what Tell it is tell me about that yeah exactly. and no one better than yeah. you to know that um it was just such a fundamental shift because even for people who were working they were until yesterday part of a very secure mnc job and now today are part of this so called risky startup um and yeah there's money backing it up but that's not always the only answer so changing my mindset as a leader changing my mindset towards building a product becoming a tech first company then an ops first company or a sales first company uh, thinking of fundraising thinking of the employer brand thinking of the merchant persona everything got amplified literally overnight and i had to adjust very fast so in some sense uh, the responsibility was on your yes. head the buck stopped at me the buck stopped at you and let's talk a little bit about how you know i can understand you convinced yourself yeah because you are a special person <laughs> but convincing others to follow your dream yeah that's got to be a tough thing so tell us about the early days then you sat down with your core team and you actually convinced them perhaps to take significant um, sort of reset in their compensation yeah. or yeah. you know i don't know whether you did that or not sure but perhaps that's what happens in startups so I, tell us a little yeah. bit about that that phase that phase was uh, was tremendously learning as, as i mentioned before shantanu and it was um, i think what worked for us at that point of time was a sheer conviction in the idea and the problem we were trying to solve and everyone having spent 4 years at groupon saw that there was a lot more we could have done but we just felt our hands were tied mm. so in some way it was like a moral victory of sorts sure. and and people aligned to that of mm. course that doesn't last forever so you always have to have results coming in to have their belief uh, amplified but in the early days it was just this yeah we got this 
done and it was a big leap and uh, we were like we exactly know what we want to do and how we want to do it and now it's just about doing it doing it doing it so was it at that time that you discovered that you had the power to inspire others i think uh, and that's a that's a very very good question timed right uh, that was when i possibly figured it works mm. uh, at scale um, I think during ISB is when I began to see the first glimpses of it, mm -hmm. where uh, I was honestly a nobody at ISB. Um, but ISB gave me a lot of respect. My batchmates gave me a lot you know, of nobody respect. Nobody as in your like academic rank? Uh, well, yeah, no, it was mm -hmm. like one year of experience in a, uh, okay. in a <laughs> school which is five years average. Right. You know, PhD, yeah. no idea about marketing, finance, nothing outside. Sure, like sure. no corporate experience okay. as such. Yeah. Uh, I had nothing to give. Huh. I had only things to absorb hmm. and uh, despite that people saw me for possibly what they saw me hmm. um, and you're right it was during that time that I, I saw that there is some sort of a quote-unquote superpower of uh, storytelling of, hmm. of being able to go beyond just data and numbers and just facts and figures to, to really touch the irrationality of people and the emotive side of theirs and, and get them to do things that possibly they also don't expect from themselves. But, but why do it in the first place? You're running a business yeah. that's been funded by large investors, Sequoia and Paytm. Yeah. I'm sure you have the regular pressures of producing quarterly, monthly, weekly results and so yes. on. And being a, uh, I'll still use the term motivational speaker because that's <laughs> sure. what most people can relate to, yeah. right? But sort of being an inspirational, motivational speaker would take so much away from you. Yeah. Uh, even emotionally mm. and not just uh, physically. Yeah. So why do it? Are you doing it for the millions of people out there who you feel can benefit? Or in some sense, are you doing it for yourself? I'm there is something doing. inside yourself that says, I want to be out there. It's, so it's not so much out there, but I, I love how you put it. I'm actually doing it for myself. It's, uh, it's what I go back to that when I am on stage and I'm on mm. stage regularly, I'm very rarely speaking to the audience. I'm speaking to myself. Um, what it does is... Uh, two things and I'll give you the genesis of it. Mm -hmm. One is we felt that at some point of time we have to own our own story because we were at the mercy of, of media. Media is what it is. We were at the mercy of people who are uh, picking up news about what we're going through, how, and you know it. It's, it's never a straight line in a startup journey or in a business. Of course. And the ups and downs can be immensely taunting and daunting for the team if they are not in charge of who owns the story and how. Like what are people thinking about you, telling you, and so on and so forth. So the first one was, can we own our own story and go direct to the consumers? Mm -hmm. They are potential employers, uh, employees, they are uh, potential investors, they are uh, potentially consumers. And, uh, and generally talk about who we are. And, and it's always about the, the leadership. I just happen to be that leader, mm -hmm. but whosoever it is tomorrow. Um, so that was one. But second was, it helped me theorize all my learnings as an entrepreneur. Because when I speak, and I do it in this period of time that I have to prove something and be effective, I cannot be meandering. I cannot sure. be, oh, I'm thinking a lot. I, said, yeah. I have to be very focused. And that, that will really help in all my communication thereafter. I can tell you the one thing um, which a lot of people are surprised by mm -hmm. is I am exactly the same person wherever mm -hmm. I am in life. And, and that is possibly my biggest asset. I don't have to put up any new identity to become that person. This is, this is who I am in front of my employees, this is who I am in front of my family, this is who I am in front of strangers. I am this person always. And that's why it doesn't mm. take any emotive energy yeah. from me. If anything, it just adds. I think the probably, Anku, the difference is that you're not doing this as your profession. I'm not, yeah. You probably don't There's charge no sure. for your sessions. Nothing. This is not your livelihood. This is something inside you that's compelling you to be out there and as you say, you talk to yourself, yeah. so then perhaps it's very truthful, yes. it's very authentic. But tell me, uh, you meet so many people, I'm sure they write to you on Twitter yeah. and all the social media platforms. Yeah. Uh, what is, you know, the couple of things that the young people in India today uh, need in terms of guidance? What is the audience talking back to you? Yeah. And you're telling them a whole bunch of things. Sure. But what's the talk back? And, uh, and that's why the, the coinage awareness speaker. What I've mm -hmm. realized more than anything else, Shantanu, is despite having such massive opportunities, not just globally, but even in India, people are still not aware. Mm -hmm. 
they're not aware of how to go about these decisions. They're not aware about how to plan their career. They're not about. Mm. They're not aware of how to make a transition if they have to. They're not aware about how to progress, how to actually make their professional careers last, or for that matter, even how to think and deal with their own psychologies. Um, why is this thing affecting me? Why is this thing not affecting me? So on and so forth. So um, the biggest thing that I get from people mm. is I'm lost. Uh, and that surprisingly is not only focused or limited to people who are young. It's literally all across. It's wow. like people writing okay. in when they're 35 and 40 saying, I have a career. I, I'm earning well. I have a family, but I'm not happy. I'm not happy. And I have to do this because of have EMIs and bills to pay and so on and so forth. But I, I, I wish I could trade for something else and I do not know what. Maybe if I want to bring you back to your PhD experience. Yeah. When you know you might be good at doing something, yes. but you may not enjoy it. You yes. may not like. You think a lot of people are trapped in that. I think they are. Uh, that sort of situation in I life. I so totally think they are. I so so totally in some sense, are. you know, hearing you talk about yourself yeah. could be potentially liberating for them. It 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 is. No, it's uh, like the one one phrase that I hear more often than others is, "I had to hear this today." Okay. Uh, and, and it's almost as if I spoke to them knowing what they were going through, which is, of course, not true. Mm -hmm. But it's like quite often when you like a movie, you almost feel as if you're in the movie. And that's why you tend to like it a lot more. Okay. Like I remember <laughs> the Dil Chata IP. <laughs> no, you could identify. You always yeah. have this conversation. Like, who, who are you amongst these you three? You can see yourself out there. You can see yourself out there. And it somehow relates. These stories are very yeah. powerful and they get past you. Sure. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what So, happens. you know, in some sense, Anko, when you talk about these stories that you're transforming the lives of people, uh, you know, I feel um, so happy about it because this is real social impact. Thank you. And do you sometimes feel that this might actually become bigger than uh, your business? <laughs> uh, I'm sure your business is doing very well. Okay. Yeah. But you have two lives that you are you're yeah. managing. Uh, yeah. So how do you deal with that? You know, do your investors ever complain? They, they, they do. I, 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 I should say that uh, it's never easy to walk this path because uh, you also mentioned that it's the the more you are in the limelight, uh, the steeper the fall can be if it happens, though. And, and every one of us will fall at some point of time or not. Um, I think the, the, the way that I have dealt with this, uh, Shantanu, is I, I rarely pay attention to the outcome of this uh, social media experiment or spend. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not tracking my followers. I'm not tracking who's gaining and who's liking and who's commenting. I mean, I'm, it's literally like... You record, I, 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 I kid you not, all the, so I, I put out a, a video a day, right? so it's a video a day, so it's that frequency. That's prolific. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and all of that happens on Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. within half an hour. Mm -hmm. So in half an hour, I shoot for the entire week and then the team posts it out and so on and so forth. And all that I do is just generally comment back because I want to be engaged with the audience that's Are you reacting. a better speaker or a better businessman? Um, I think I'm a, I'm a better people person uh, and that does occasionally make me a better businessman but not always. So it's sort of feeding each other? It, I, I hope it does, I hope it does because what I'm really good at is, is building teams. What I'm really good at is, uh, is getting a team together to work for a common And that's the heart process. and soul of uh, business uh, it, it is, in any it case, is, right? yeah, it is, yeah. it is. But tell me, um, how much of the gyan that you give to others hmm. do you consume yourself? <laughs> Almost be all be honest about no, it. And, and I'm being genuinely <laughs> honest about this. As, as I mentioned, there is no dual identity. You know, it's, whatever I speak, hmm. is, it's, it's straight from the heart. I don't rehearse it. There's no points that I have to make. It's literally like rapid fire, just go out and speak whatever is on top of your mind. And uh, I have this belief that uh, if you speak the truth, then you don't have to think about what you've told others. Absolutely. Uh, and and that, that always helps. That always helps. So, Ankur, uh, let's talk a little bit about the business itself. Sure. Right. So, nearby is in a very hot space, yeah. right? And there's a lot of competition around yeah. you. So, how do you, um, you know, what's your outlook for the business itself? Sure. The way we see it is, for, let me first define the business sure. eh, because it, it gets loose. So Group One was in deals and discounts. Like there was a classic, very nice group buying model and so on. Um, when we became nearby, uh, we definitely didn't want to limit ourselves to that. And we felt that there's a lot more we can do in a country like India. What we stand for is everything that you do when you step out of your home or office. 
um, whether it's eating out, whether it's beauty and wellness, whether it's entertainment, whether it's shopping, whether it's even travel. Mm -hmm. And we cover all those categories. Um, by virtue of that, there is no direct competitor that we have. We have competition in verticals. Mm -hmm. So in food, we have clearly defined competition. In entertainment, we have clearly defined mm -hmm. competition. But no one that cuts across all. Um, just as you mentioned, it has been really hard because I think building a B2C internet company in India is hard. It is hard and it's still early days. Monetization is tough. Uh, it's not easy for people to open their wallets and pay out. Um, thankfully, the layers of trust and everything have gone mm -hmm. by, but value still remains a very inherent decision point. And um, thankfully, we are at that intersection where we provide good value by giving those deals and discounts. But it's amazing how uh, people become very used to it. Uh, it becomes a new normal. And, and then people are looking for the next thing and the next thing and the next so thing. So in your, in your own life, yeah. you know, every four or five years you've done something dramatically different. Yeah. So should we expect that in the next, it's been four years, I think. Yeah, it's been four years. <laughs> for nearby. Yes. So can we expect that very soon? Yes, you'll probably very soon. Disrupt your current situation very, as well. Very soon. We're, 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 as we speak, coming up with something that we hopefully should be a lot bigger than what we've done so far. Fantastic, Uncle. Yeah. been great uh, speaking with you. That was uh, Ankur, one of the most uh, exceptional uh, business people, and he really represents a new uh, kind of entrepreneur that India is seeing. Someone who is very aware of who he is, wants to share, wants to transmit his knowledge, his experience, his wisdom, his intelligence to millions of uh, people, and honestly just wish that there were uh, more people like Ankur, because as he mentioned, in some sense, in India, we have millions of young kids who are looking for motivation, who are looking for direction, and who are currently lost. So, Ankur, we wish that you can uh, potentially devote even more time from what you are doing to reaching out to you know, hundreds of thousands of young people who follow you uh, because they really need your help and advice. And uh, lots of uh, good wishes for Thank nearby. You. Thank you. And we'll watch the space to see what's the next big thing Thank you. that you're coming up with. Thank you so much, Antno. Thanks Thank a you. lot.